What's up YouTube? Ian Sandusky back here again for Let's Machine. Today we're going to go through how to make a brand out of aluminum. Uh, a buddy of mine owns a furniture company. He wants something that he can heat up and press into his furniture that he makes with his logo on it. So what we're going to do today inside the VF5 is machine something up for him. Really, really basic. Today we're also going to go through a little bit of how to use high speed uh, 2D tool pass, dynamic milling in Mastercam X9. So if you've never used that, or you have 2017, this is something for you to check out. Um, let's go take a look. Let's go upstairs, let's program it. So I originally drew this logo in AutoCAD. Um, there's a really easy feature you can do to bring in an image and then trace over it. And the way I did this is, I, as you can see, it's symmetrical. So what I did is I drew half of it and then ended up mirroring it. So that way everything is perfect, symmetrical. You don't have one S that looks a little different than the other and so on and so forth. Now, since this is a brand, obviously it's gonna to need to be upside down. Um, it gets heated up and pressed in. So if this way, if, I, if we made it this way, it would be backwards. So we flip it around to mirror it. We end up with something like this. Uh, my actual brand size is four by four. Um, this out here is the machining region for the pocket. It's just to make sure that this entire outside area is milled down um, just in case my uh, piece of material isn't actually four inches, maybe it's a little bigger. This way it makes sure everything is cleaned up. Um, I didn't buy the 3D modeling this or anything, it's all flat geometry, uh, so it's pretty easy that way. Our first tool path is a pocket with a half inch cutter. This goes around the outside, uh, you can see it has a helical entry here. It's going down to one eighth depth. It's just cleaning out everything along the way. Um, I believe I'm using a parallel spiral tool path on this. And you see that's why it has these little uh, ins and outs in the corners there to clean it up. Second tool path we're gonna use here is a 2D high speed path. You can hit this by going into 2D high speed. And this is a dynamic mill. So you can see here, um, it looks really, really crazy. I'm doing it with a 1 8th. Obviously, I could have used a bigger cutter to hog it out and then uh, finish it up. But for what I'm doing, I didn't really care. It's one piece. I was running it between um, jobs. So if it takes a little longer, it doesn't matter. What it's doing, the reason it's so loopy like this, is it's only going to cut in a climb milling fashion. It's not going to conventional mill at all. So what it's gonna do is after it helicals, it's gonna cut at my um, feed rate, which I believe is 60 to 80 inches a minute at full depth with a 1 8 cutter. So it's going to 1 8 with a 1 8 cutter, which, you know, it's pretty good. And it's only gonna take off 60 thou or 50 thou, whatever I have it set to, back feed at 710 inches a minute, which is as fast as my uh, VF5 can back feed. It lifts up 10 thou when it does that. So it cuts, lifts up, back feeds, and then cuts again, back feeds, cuts again. And it knows how much it can take off each time. And it basically goes ahead and uh, does it as efficiently as possible. Now, I don't have a finish pass on this because of the lower geometry here we don't care about. The only thing we care about is the Christmas crispness of these lines. I don't care what this face looks like. Um, it's a brand, right? All it's gonna do is press it in and that's it. So our last tool path, we don't want to do this all again with 1 16th, but you can see that in here, it's not cleaning up. So for my last tool path, I'm doing the same kind of high speed tool path with a 1 16th, but with rest milling. So what rest milling is, is it goes and it does the rest that's left from a, pro, from a program before it, an operation before it, I should say. So if we turn this on, you can see my 1 16th is only going in where the other tools couldn't reach, um, such as in here, you know, up and around here. This is a, a rapid movement. Um, although yellow is rapid movement in Mastercam, it's feeding at 710 inches a minute, which is essentially a rapid speed. Uh, since it's 1 16th and it's going down to 1 8th, uh, I don't want to cut 1 8th with a 1 16th. Uh, I could, I guess, and use a really small step over. Instead, I just made it take uh, 62 and a half thou passes. So full depth, full pass. So we run this on the screen. Uh, let's turn all these on, bring it up, wait for it to process, let it run. Again, you can turn on your tool opacity here. 
So we can see, this is going out that one eighth. Color loop is on. I like color loop because then you can see what each tool is doing. Um, it's kind of nice to make sure no tool is going to get overburdened. So you can see it calculates how much to take off. So it's always going to be taking off the same amount of material wherever it goes. You don't have to worry about burying your tool or anything like that. Now it's not going to get super close in here. I could finish that out with an even smaller tool, but uh, my buddy said it's okay if it looks a little round in there. It's a brand anyway, so it's not going to be super, super crisp. It's going into wood. Um, so, you know, it's going to look burnt no matter what. And there we go. So if you turn off the color loop, you can see what it looks like when it's done. So let's go downstairs. Let's uh, put it into the VF5 and let's run it. So there you have it guys, that's how we're going to make an aluminum brand out of 6061 aluminum. Um, really basic, again, don't be afraid to play around with these toolpaths. I had never used that one specific toolpath um, in aluminum with a 1 8. Yes. So, uh, you know, play around, never hurts. Thank you very much for tuning in guys. Make sure you like and subscribe below if you want to see more videos. Again, thanks for watching. You take care.